Hi, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to another uh, interview from the uh, TechX Global 2022 here at the uh, Olympia London. Uh, I'm joined this afternoon by Jason Walkley. Uh, hi, Jason, Chief Sales Officer for Wireless Logic. It's a pleasure to be able to have you here today. How, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Stephen. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, to talk to you. Uh, fantastic to be able to have you here. So, um, Wireless Logic. So, you know. Talk to me kind of like very quickly about, about what it is that you guys do, you know, who, who you are um, as an organization. Okay, so Wireless Logic are a, a managed IoT connectivity platform provider. Uh, I guess we've been in existence in one form or another for about 20 years, so we know this market well. Um, we, we're a British business, uh, we ultimately we, we, we were founded in the UK, but we're a true global player today with a particularly strong footprint in, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, in essence, we, we help organizations connect their IoT applications. So you know, the vast majority of IoT applications are reliant on um, uh, collecting data from sensors or devices and all of these things. The fundamental component to that is connectivity. Mm. And that's where we specialize. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So um, thank you for that overview, by the way. Um, so I suppose uh, in a more kind of broader sense, really, you know, what is the the kind of key objective, if you like, really, you know, for Wireless Logic as an organization? Yeah, well, we like to build very long-term relationships with our customers, and we've been very successful in doing that historically. We're very fortunate. We work in a really exciting market. It's, it's almost impossible to find a vertical market today that doesn't have an application for IoT. Yeah. Um, but, but what we realize, we're, we're, we're very keen to engage with our, our prospective customers or our existing customers as early as possible in their solution lifestyle de life cycle development process so yeah at the real point of the the initial fruition of ideas because the the connectivity component is often a thing that is is left until quite late in the process but it's so fundamental to how an organization might ultimately be able to scale and deploy uh their solutions particularly from a geographic perspective yeah 100 percent, fantastic so um in terms of you know your core solutions, then really as as an organisation, um, I wonder if you can just give us kind of like a brief overview of, as to what they actually are. Yeah, well, fundamentally, I guess at the heart of all of that, we have a platform, and that platform is is uh, is is fundamental in helping organisations. You know, IoT deployments often run into thousands, tens of thousands, or even mm -hmm. millions of assets deployed remotely in the field. Being able to um, ensure that those are effectively connected and understanding the status of that connectivity, managing those assets, knowing where they are, mm -hmm. is really important. And our, our platform helps organizations do that in a really simple way. Um, often organizations will have multiple applications or um, solutions, and they will often be deployed across multiple territories. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th that will require, in some cases, different types of connectivity solutions. Mm -hmm. The great thing about our platform is that you can manage all of that through a single pane of glass, um, and, and that obviously comes with huge benefits in terms of operational efficiencies and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but but yes, in essence, we we help organisations. We provide them with a single source for all of their connectivity requirements across multiple technologies and across multiple geographies. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. So. In, in, that's obviously kind of what you guys are, you know, up to now, essentially. Um, you know, looking down the crystal ball, you know, kind of looking down, like, what, what the plans are really for kind of, like, 2023 and kind of the future, you know, thereafter as well. Like, where, where do you guys kind of, like, see, you know, your organization, essentially? Uh, it's a really it's a really good question. So, for us, personally, we our business is evolving. We, we built our own core IoT network that's specifically built for IoT. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the various global mobile network operators have incredible networks, but those networks really are focused on supporting their very broad spectrum of customers. And for the vast majority of mobile network operators, their biggest customer base and their biggest revenue streams are their consumer customers. Mm -hmm. um, and secondary to that, their enterprise customers for primarily voice and data communications. IoT is really quite specialist. So we, we've built a, uh, what we believe is a as an industry-leading um IoT core network that we intend to harness to the benefit of our customers over the coming years. So we're really uh, over the forthcoming years. So we're really focused on building out that capability. Um, we're really focused on, as I say earlier, helping our customers ensure that when they build their solutions, they build them for the future. 
but also you know we recognize that um yeah there's a lot of challenges in this market today so a lot of organizations also have legacy basis of solutions and yeah. but you know we see the next few years helping them you know i adopt and identify some of the new and emerging technologies low power wan lta ltem and narrowband iot um potentially 5G as that becomes more and more prevalent and relevant to the IoT world. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's an industry where, the, 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 as I say, it's, it's full of challenges. And in the meantime, they've got more immediate things to worry about. Major networks across the world are, are sunsetting their 3G networks. Some already have, yet some, more, you know, some large deployments out there in the field today are still wholly reliant on 3G or only compatible with 3G. Mm -hmm. Time travels so quickly. By the end of this decade, it seems like a long time away, but when you're trying to, to get, manage huge estates of assets out in the field, it's not mm -hmm. a long time. And 2G networks will be sunsetting. So, yeah. you know, a lot, some of our time will be, I, I, I guess, a big, a significant aspect of our focus will be around helping our customers manage those current challenges. Um, on the other hand, helping them ensure that they're they're building for the future and they're ready for the future and they're able to harness a lot of the new and emerging technologies. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So, you know, in, in terms of those kind of uh, challenge areas, one thing that always springs to mind for, for me in particular, when you're talking about, you know, the internet of things and, and IoT connectivity in general, is, is the kind of um, potential kind of like security concerns, you know, within that, you know, obviously a lot of these networks are not always completely, you know, totally secure and, and a lot of them, course you know are um, not even slightly secure so um, talk to me a little bit about that you know we're within the industry at the moment um, are there kind of like any like real concerns um, with regards to that and and what do you guys kind of well, what can you guys as an organization kind of do to help you're so so right I mean security has to be the cornerstone of any IOT solutions mm -hmm. um, architecture and and it's fundamental for that people think about that you know, our data is often is not only sensitive; it's often extremely valuable, and you want, you know organisations need to protect that. And they also need to protect their customers. So, mm -hmm. and and I think sometimes, uh, you know, in in particularly in the world of cellular IoT connectivity, people mm -hmm. see a SIM card, and um, and what's their what was it par comparison? So they draw the comparison to the f SIM card that they put on their in their phone, right? Yeah. Or maybe in their mobile broadband router. The, the, the world of IoT connectivity it might be using the same cellular bearer technologies, but the way in which it needs to be considered, designed, implemented is, is, is fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and security is a key cornerstone of that. I think there's a broad recognition, actually, that, that cellular can offer some significant benefits in inher its inherent security mm -hmm. over and above traditional fixed connectivity solutions. Um, uh, so, so yes, it's in, in many respects inherently more secure, but it's really important, and this is a key, again, a, a key component of the capabilities that we offer to our customers are around how we help them secure, authenticate, mm -hmm. secure, and lock down their IoT connectivity. Fantastic, fantastic. So, I suppose, um, you know, in, in terms of like a, a, an organization, you know, kind of like looking out there, you know, for a potential kind of like partner such as yourselves, what kind of benefits are there really, you know, to, to, you know, coming along and partnering alongside wireless logic? Yeah, so I think, I think there's really, you know, you, uh, everybody, most organizations have significant aspirations, right? Sometimes they meet and actually exceed those aspirations. So always be, I would say, be ambitious about and, and open-minded about where you may ultimately go with the solution that you're designing. And partner with an organization that is able to support you in reaching those ambitions. So, um, you know, IoT uh, applications, many are notoriously um, challenging in terms of the remote, the, the volume of um, assets that are deployed and the remoteness of those assets mm -hmm. that are deployed. So you want to, you know, and, and changing uh, connectivity partners can be really challenging, um, both commercially and operationally. So first of all, make sure that you're working with a really sustainable partner. Mm -hmm. You know, an organization that is robust, an organization that's scalable and potentially can give you the coverage in terms of the technologies and the geographies that you, you, you need to work across. Um, that's innovative and forward thinking that just doesn't accept the status quo, that's constantly 
pushing the boundaries of innovation and, and looking at you know how they can help their clients do things mm. in a smarter, more effective, more agile and commercially compelling way. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I would, I, in summary, I think they're, they're probably the key considerations for me. Awesome, fantastic. So obviously, you know, I'm assuming by that, you know, Wireless Logic is that kind of partner. You know, you guys have got that that kind of robust kind of nature to you guys. Um, so um, just just one final question, I suppose, for you, really. You know, um, I'd really kind of be quite kind of keen to understand, you know, from, from kind of the market in general, what really makes wireless logic, you know, kind of stand out from, you know, amongst the, the other competitors and amongst your rivals? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, and, and yes, I do think we're, we're you know, well, we, we meet the criteria that I described to you earlier. You won't be surprised to hear that. <laughs> and, and yes, we are, a, uh, we, we believe, a very significant player in the market today. We, we have, a, we currently help connect and manage over 10 million assets globally. Mm. And, the, and, and that volume of asset, connected assets is growing at a, a, at a rate of knots for us. Um, in in respect, sorry, I've lost the train of thought here. You you asked me. <laughs> so in terms of like uh, the, the the rivals out there in the market, you know what really sets kind of uh, wireless logic completely apart from from those. Sorry, yeah. So in terms of what sets us aside from from I think some of our our potentially our peers and our competitors' market is our, our global footprint and capabilities, mm -hmm. um, our our tenure and experience in the market. Um, our, our breadth of capability and coverage, um, and and I also really fundamentally just our culture and the way in which we work and our highly collaborative approach to to, to long building long term sustainable customer relationships. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Well, that has been absolutely eye opening. So thank you so much for, for everything that you've just shared with me there. Um, I would uh, yeah I'd like to just thank you for your time. Uh, it's been really, really great to be able to, you know, get to know you personally a little bit better and, and of course, you know, your organization as well. So thank you very much for, for spending that time with me. No, thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure.